All right, what's up guys, Scott here, and today I'm gonna give you my overview slash review of the mouse that I've been using for the last month, which is the Razer Death Adder V2. I got it for like $70 from Amazon about a month ago, and I've been using it every day since. I went ahead and picked this one up because my previous mouse, the Death Adder Elite, which I've been using for the past four or five years, the right mouse button was finally giving out and it wasn't working anymore. So I decided to go ahead and pick up the V2. So far, I've been pretty impressed with it. It's a great mouse. And for me, it's definitely worth that $70 price tag. Just for a reference, I've been using the Death Adder series of mice since I think 2013, when they first came out originally or sometime around then. And I've pretty much been using the Death Adder series exclusively since then. And I've really gotten accustomed to the shape and feel and size of the mouse. So I might be a little bit biased in my review and saying that I really like this mouse because I'm kind of a, a Death Adder fanboy. And I would definitely say that the Death Adder V2 is the best version of this mouse that has come out so far. For me, I really like how it fits the, the shape of my hand. And this mouse especially is a little different from previous generations and that it's, it's lighter and it's a bit thinner. So when playing games like Call of Duty or other FPS games, it feels like I'm more easily able to, to move my hand around and um, it just feels easier to aim than, than previous generations because of the light weight. As well as it also has these white pads on the bottom of it, which are like really smooth plastic. They're almost uh, covered in some slippery material that helps it uh, move along the mouse pad better. For me, for like gaming peripherals in general, I think the best peripherals are ones that you don't really notice. Like you don't even feel them. Like you, don't, you forget that you're holding a mouse. And I think that is the hallmark of what makes a good mouse great is if you forget you're even playing a computer game, I guess. Like I've had trouble in the past where I tried to use a different mouse, like some of the more wireless ones. And I didn't have a problem with the tracking in those, but they were so heavy that like it took away from my immersion in the game. And I was like reminded that I was holding a mouse. Like I don't have that with this. Sometimes I just forget that I'm even holding a mouse. It's like that intuitive to me, I guess. As far as an overview of it, it's got uh, a nice scroll wheel. Give it sound. The buttons are fantastic. Uh, it's got two two thumb buttons that I like using. And then it's got this gripped texture, which is a part of the mouse, which is different from previous generations of the mouse, where it was kind of like an adhesive sticky tape onto it. And I had problems with those sometimes coming off after a couple years or so, so I don't have to worry about that with this mouse. Of course, it's got the, the Razer RGB, which is probably some of the best RGB effects in the industry on peripherals. If Razer does one thing right, it's, it's RGB. It's probably their strongest suit. It also has an onboard uh, memory button here. You can set up different profiles in the, in the Razer Synapse software, and you can click that button to switch those profiles, and that memory is actually stored on the mouse. So if you're someone that uses that function, then there you go. I guess that's just not something that I probably would use. However, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about a gaming mouse. Again, it's seventy dollars, which is pretty expensive for any gaming mouse. But for me, it's the best version of my favorite mouse, so I definitely enjoy using it. I'm gonna link a different Razer Death Adder down below, which is probably a cheaper one. If you're interested in a more price-friendly Death Adder, there's the Razer Death Adder Essential, which is a pretty similar shape to this one, but doesn't come with, with as many of the bells and whistles. I think you can only get it in uh, the green light-up color, but it still has the same Death Adder shape and feel. These ones just might be a tiny bit heavier and wider compared to this one because this is the V2 special model. But I think for 30 bucks, this is probably one of the best mice that is in that price range. And I think for 70 bucks, this is also the one that I'm currently using is best one in the price range too. The same with all Razer products that you get. It, it comes with their newest Synapse software, which I don't have a problem with. It doesn't seem to cause much computer slowdown or any issues with that. And it's really easy to get in here and customize what you want each button to do. Like these are normally uh, DPI buttons here, but you can change them to anything you want. You can make the macro keys. You can have it launch different programs if you want or become a volume up button and a volume down button. Like for me, I don't use different DPI settings in my games. I just have one DPI that I stick with. So I could set these to my volume buttons if I wanted to. And then the lighting system is really cool. You can get into Chroma Studio and you can fully customize your mouse and keyboard lights. And the Razer logo and the wheel are independent of colors, so you can completely change them with a billion different colors of whatever you want. Otherwise, that's really it. That's just my short review of the Razer Death Adder V2. It's a fantastic mouse for the price. I don't think you'll be let down if you get one. I'll put a link in the description down below and in the comments for both versions of the mouse, the, the $70 one and the $30 one. But otherwise, that's it for me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.
I'll try and crawl to the bottom floor of your house, Scott. If that is indeed... Nope, it is not possible. Okay. I downed a guy in the chopper. Clip oh, that. You hit him. How did you guys